So I'm recording this for my juniors and other absent people that will have to make up the test as soon as they return. Um, now, your formulas will not be on the test, but let's talk about which ones of these you need to know. All right? So first one is this guy right here. What is pi r squared representing? Area. This right here is my area. What I love about that is any area formula is going to have pi r squared in it somewhere. So that one is also area, but what is it specifically? The sector area. Sector area. Okay. Now these two are the same. Why are they the same? Because 2r is the same thing as d, right? What is that representing? And so when we're doing the m over 360 times that, we also have arc length. <clears throat> because arc length is a part of the circumference, right? It's the crust of your pie piece. So to me, there's a lot of, oh, and then there's this guy that I think that's just a distractor. It's not even a real formula. Um, to me, I feel like there's really only two formulas you need to know. Area is pi r squared and circumference is 2 pi r because these ones you're just going to put m over 360 in front of it if you're looking at a pie piece instead of the circle as a whole. Does that make sense? Okay, so what is the length of the radius in a circle with a circumference of 5 pi inches? So 5 pi is the circumference. I'm going to set that equal to one of my circumference equations. Now, I can always set it equal to 2 pi r. It doesn't matter. If I want to use pi d, sometimes that can shorten my process. But I'm going to set it to 2 pi r because what am I looking for? The radius. So I need to get r by itself, so I'm going to divide by... 2 pi. So that gets me r. Notice the pi's cancel out, and I have 5 over 2. Now, when you get to your test, I'm not going to want decimals on the computer. It will specify. So the way you would type this in as your answer is you would type in 5 slash 2. That's how you would type in your answer. Okay? Question? So I'm going to be talking to you as I go through this about how you're going to be typing things in. All right? Um, a circle has an area of 100 pi square miles. Oh, let me step back for a minute. Number one, I am going to want the units in your answer. So you're going to type in 5 slash 2, then you're going to press space. That, because we're talking about inches, I do want units. Okay? All right. Area is 100 pi square miles. What is the circumference? All right. So if that's the area, I'm going to set it equal to the area formula. And then I'm going to solve it to get r so that I can plug r into the circumference formula. So what am I going to divide by? Uh, pi. Pi. So I get r squared equals 100. So what does r equal? 10. 10, because I have to square root, correct? So, so the circumference would then be 2, two times pi <coughs> times 10, Wait, right? Wait, 2 pi r, uh-huh. Because I just found the radius, but it's not asking oh, yeah. for the radius. It's oh. asking for the <laughs> circumference. So I have to plug the radius back into my circumference formula right here. So what does that give me? 20 pi. Now, most of your tests, I think all of your tests, except maybe one question, asks you to leave it in terms of pi. So how do you type in 20 pi into the computer? You do this. 20 pi. That's what you're going to type in. Easy enough? Pi. Pi. And those instructions will be at the top of the test. So it'll say type in PI for pi. Okay? <clears throat> Not PIE, but PI. Okay. Refer to this figure for uh, numbers 3 through 7. Leave your answer in terms of pi. 
Now, one other cautionary note I want to make for your test. We are going to have pictures. They're not going to look exactly like these. They're going to be the ones where, you know how the arc is darkened? Yeah. But it might not be asking for arc length. It will have a picture. You have to read the instructions because your picture may look like this, but it might be saying find the area of the circle. Mm. In which case, the pie piece itself doesn't really matter. You just need the radius. Okay, because we used the same image for several questions. So one question it might say find the area, one question it might say find the sector area, one question it might say find the arc length. So it's the same picture and it might look like you're supposed to find one thing, so read the directions to make sure you're finding the correct thing. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. So what is the circumference? Circumference is 2 pi r, 2 pi, what's the radius? Six. Sorry, 6. I was doing the two, times 2 in my head already. So that gives me what? 12 pi? How am I going to type that into the computer? 12, 12 pi. 12 pi what? Meters. Meters. And I forgot to put the units on my last one. Shame on you, Franken. The last one was miles. miles. Oh, so we put mi Yep, you just use whatever the MI is miles. It should, you should be able to just see what the abbreviation is based on the problem. Yes? So 12 pi is 37.7, you're not going to want any decimals? No decimals, right, 12 pi. All of them say leave in terms of pi. Okay. I think there might be one question that says round to the nearest tenth, and it's a, it's, I think it's the clock problem. Oh. Um, but the rest of them are all in terms of pi. All right, what is the length of arc ZY? So I'm doing arc length now. Is that a part of the circumference or a part of the area? A part of the circumference, right? So I take my circumference formula, which I already found is 12 pi, and I multiply it by 85 over 360. Right? You take your circumference and multiply it by 85 over 360. So, 85 over 360 reduces to 17 over 72 times 12. Now, I'm not going to include the pi because if I put the pi in here, it's going to give me a decimal. Mm -hmm. I just want a fraction. So, 2 and 5, 6. So, I hit second and my fraction button again. And this is 17 over 6 pi. Pi what? meters. Now how do I type that into the computer? I go 17 over 6 pi meters. That's what it'll look like in the computer. So we're not finding the arc length, we don't do the angle measurement that we have. We did. But because arc length is part of circumference, you take it and multiply it by the circumference. If it was acting, asking for the sector area, I would take the 85 over 360 and multiply it by the area, which I think I'm doing here. So the area is pi r squared. My radius is 6, so what do I have? 36 pi meters squared. Now i got to show you how to put a squared in the computer, right? Because we haven't done that. So how are you going to type that in? That's going to be 36 pi and then meters, you're going to hit the to the, I call that the to the button. That means whatever comes next is your exponent. Wait, can you show us the M to the second. It is a button that should be above the six. It's one of those special symbols that's above the numbers on your keyboard. Okay. And again, at the top of the test, it says type in something to the squared by doing the little arrow and the squared or and the two. Okay? That is a very common notation. In fact, on your calculator, that's your exponent button too. So it's the same symbol and it can be found above the six on your keyboard. Capiche? So again, those instructions are at the top of the test and you can always ask me also. All right? What is the area of the sector? So here's where I take the 85 over 360 and I multiply it by 36 pi, multiply it by the area. So, 85 times 
over 360 times 36 is eight and a half. I don't want to mix number, so I'm going to hit second in my fraction button, and I get 17 over 2 pi. Uh, hang on, I keep forgetting this. Meters squared, right? Anything area, sector area or circle area always has to have squared. So how would I type that in? 17 slash 2 pi m arrow 2. Okay? Now this is actually handy for you because this is very common notation on computers. Okay? Anybody that knows anything about typing anything in math, like when you get to your state testing and stuff, if you can't find an exponent button, you can always use that. It's a very commonly known thing. Question? Um, yeah, a space here, you don't need to put a space there. Okay. All right. What is the measure of angle X in radians? So this is still with regards to that previous one. So that's asking me to take 85 degrees and change it to radians. How do I do that? Multiply by pi over 180. Well, that's 85 over 1. That gives me 85 pi over 180. Go to my calculator, and if I type in 85 fraction button 180, it will reduce it for me. 17 over 36. So I have 17 pi over 36. Um, and that's radians. I don't need to say radians or anything. How would I type that in? 17 slash 36 pi. And there's no units on that. Okay? You don't need to worry about units on the radians and degrees problems. Degrees, there's no easy way to get that symbol in. Okay? All right, the measure of angle A is 48 degrees, so we're no longer looking at this circle. We're in a completely different problem. The measure of angle A is 48 degrees. What is the measure of angle A in radians? So I need to take 48 degrees and change it to radians, which means I need to multiply it by pi over 180. What does that give me? 48 pi over 180. So 48 over 180, that gives me 4 pi over 15. So I would type into my computer 4 slash 15 pi. Yeah? We good with that? All right. The minute hand on an analog clock, this is what I'm referring to when I say the clock problem. This one, I believe, is a decimal answer. Okay. Um, the minute hand on an analog clock is seven inches long. What does that piece of information tell me? Radius is seven. How far does the tip of the remaining of the minute hand travel as the time goes from 735 to 754? How many minutes is this? 19 minutes. How many minutes are on a clock total? 60. So my fraction is going to be 19 out of 60. Does that make sense? Why is it not 19 out of 360? Because the clock is not divided into degrees, it's deg divided into minutes. Okay. Uh, now each minute does represent a certain amount of degrees, but we don't go there on a clock. We just talk about minutes. Um, am I talking about sector area or arc length? Arc length. When I'm talking about how far it moved, I'm talking about arc length. So that means I put what in here? The circumference or the area? Circumference. circumference, because arc length is a part of the circumference. So that would be 2 pi r. Yeah? So in other words, I have 19 over 60 times 14 pi. So let's see. Again, ignoring the pi on my calculator because it's just going to give me decimal. Actually, this is the problem where decimals are okay, right? So 19 over 60 times 14 is that times pi. Now it's going to give me the decimal. 13.9 what? What's my unit of measure? Inches. Inches. 
So that, I would type that one out just like that. That's the one where I put a decimal. Only that one. And it will say round it off to the nearest. Yeah. Sophia. Um, I would prefer you not because if it says round to the nearest tenth, I do need to see that tenth there. Yeah. Okay. All right. For, find the circumference and the area. Leave your answer in terms of pi. All right. Circumference is, well, first off, this is my diameter. So what's my radius? Six. So circumference would be two times pi times six, which is 12 pi. Right. How do I type that into the computer? 12 pi. And area would be pi times r squared. So what is that? 36 pi. So 36 pi. Um, I do need to put inch or uh, units though. So this is centimeters. So this would be 12 pi cm. This one would be 36 pi cm arrow 2, because it has to be centimeters squared. Because area is the centimeters squared, so you got to remember that guy. Okay, Sector area, circle area. Anything that says area has to have that squared thing. How come over here number 21 says 36 pi? How come you need to be 36? Because that would give you a decimal, and it says leave your answer in terms of pi. Got it? Okay, so let's try this guy. Now, this one absolutely drives me nuts. You do not have one on your test like this. They should never, ever give you a decimal and ask you to leave it in terms of pi. That doesn't make sense. The whole point of leaving it in terms of pi is to not have a decimal. So here's what I'm going to do on this one. Now, you will not have to do this on your test, I promise. I'm going to take 5.5 and change it to a fraction. And we're going to deal with this as if it said 11 halves meters, just for practice. OK? On your test, you will not have to convert anything like that. All right? So circumference, again, is 2 pi r. Well, what's 2 times 11 halves? Well, here's 11 halves times 2 is 11. So what do I get? 11 pi meters. Type that into the computer by saying 11 pi meters. Why is it not meters squared? Not area. All right. Area would be pi times 11 halves squared. Well, let's do 11 halves squared. I could do it in my head pretty quickly, but if you're not that comfortable with fractions, do 11 halves squared and change it around in there it's 121 over 4 where did that come from isn't it just 11 squared and 2 squared that's the shortcut so I have a 121 over 4 pi and I have to say meters to the second as far as my units are concerned on that guy questions Ready for the back side? Okay, let's see. Find the arc length and sector area. All right, so I have 90 over 360 times and 90 over 360 times something else. One of these is going to be times the circumference. The other one's going to be times the area. So if I do circumference, that's 2 pi times 3. And the area would be pi times 3 squared, like that. Yeah? Which one is which? The pi squared. Area is going to be that guy. Arc length is going to be that guy. Because arc length is a part of circumference. <coughs> Sector area is a part of the whole area. Did I have a question? No. Somewhere? Okay. All right. So let's see. 90 over 360 is 1 fourth. Oh, that's easy. So 1 fourth times 6 pi. 1 fourth times 6 is 3 halves. So I have 3 halves pi.
pi miles. And that one's not squared because it's the part of the circumference. This one, I'm going to have one-fourth times, because this is one-fourth, times nine gives me nine-fourths pi. This is the one that has to be miles to the second. Because it's an area. It has the word so area. It's easier for me if you do. That would be my preference. Okay? All right, same thing here. 60 over 360 times 2 pi r and 60 over 360 times pi r squared. So, let's see what 60 over 360 is. Anyone know? 1 sixth times 2 times 6 is 12. I get 2 pi. That's what one, my arc length or my sector area? <coughs> Circumference goes with arc length. So I have 2 pi meters. 60 over 360 is 1 sixth times 2 times 6 gives me 2. Okay? Or you could just do it times 12, because 2 times 6 is 12. That's fine. That means the same thing. Um, okay, sector area. So this is going to be 60 over 360 times what? 36. And that gives me... Sorry, I did that wrong on my calculator. 60 over 360 times 36 is 6 pi meters to the second. Get it? Okay, let's do this last one here, arc length. Now this one, do you notice that it's the big sector that's being colored in? So I have 300 over 360. Arc length will be times 2 times pi times 5, and area will be times pi times 5 squared. So let's see, 300 over 360, I think that's 5, 6, yep, times, for arc length, I'm going to have times 10, and that gets me 25 over 3 pi, what? Kilometers. Hit second, and then your fraction button again, and then enter. Okay, so 300 over 360, which was 5, 6, times, this time it's going to be 25 pi, so just times 25, there's that fraction like you were mentioning, hit second and your fraction button and enter, I get 125 over 6 pi kilometers to the second. Okay, so far so good? All right, number 15, convert each degree into radians. So I multiply by pi over 180. That gives me 75 pi over 180. Go onto my calculator, do 75 over 180. That reduces to 5 over 12, so I would say 5 slash 12 pi. That's what I would type into my calc or into the computer. Okay? 150. That gives me 150 pi over 180. 150 over 180 is 5 sixths. So I have 5 slash 6 pi. Easy peasy. No units needed on those ones. Same thing with the degrees. How do I convert radians to degrees? Multiply by 180 over pi. 
So that gives me something where the pi's cancel out. That's a good thing because you don't want pi's in degrees. So seven times, oops, seven times 180 is 1260 over four. So 1260 divided by four on my calculator is 315 degrees. And you would just type in 315. Easy peasy? Easy as pi. <laughs> pi, pi. <laughs> uh, uh, times 180 over pi. And you see the pi's are going to cancel again. So I have 180 over 12. And again, if you get a fraction, leave it as a fraction. I don't believe you should get a fraction on these guys, though. 15, and don't worry about the degree symbol. Too hard to type it. Okay? So far, so good? No, because your pi canceled out. Degrees don't usually have a pi. Only radians do. All right. The circles are concentric. What do we know about concentric circles? We know that the radius of the small over the arc of the small is equal to the radius of the large over the arc of the large. Right? Radius of small over arc of small equals radius of large over arc of large. So what do I have? I have 32x equals, just cross multiplying here, 1440 divided by 32. And x equals 45. You don't need the x equals, just put 45 what? Inches. That's what you would write for your answer. Wait, so it's, what's the formula for this? Small radius over small arc equals big radius over big arc. Small radius over small arc equals big arc. It's just radius over arc equals radius over arc, but you have to keep your circles together. So one has to be, yeah. Yeah. It's just radius over arc, but each fraction has to be each individual circle. So one fraction has to be both small measurements. One of them has to be both big measurements. So you said the 20 is the small radius? Small radius arc. over small arc, big radius over big arc. Okay. So what's that going to look like here? Small radius, 12 over small arc <coughs> equals big radius over big arc, don't know it. So 12x equals 30 times 10.2 is 306, divide by 12, and I get 25.5 meters. And again, if that one allows decimals, it will say so in the instructions, or you can ask me and I can clarify it for you. Okay. All right, last two questions, more clock questions. So we did a clock question on the other side, right here. We find out the minutes, put it over 60, and multiply it by the circumference. So here's my radius. So I have something times 2 times pi times 5. And let's see, how many minutes are we talking about? 11, 13, 23, 33, 43. That would be 30 minutes. 30, 16, so, 30 over 60 times what? 2 times 5 is 10. I get 5 pi. This is the one where we need decimal though, right? So times pi, I would type in what? 15.7 what? Inches. It will say in the instructions. Yeah. This is the one that you can do the inches on. Okay? All right. Last one. The minute on end of a clock is 9 inches. So something times 2 times pi times 9. And it'll say this. To the nearest tenth of an inch. That's how I know I can use decimal in my answer. How far does the tip of the minute hand travel? As the time progresses from... 727 to 742. 27, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42. 
That's 15 minutes, I think. Yeah? Yeah. So 15 over 60 is 1 fourth times 2. Well, I can do that easier. Uh, 15 over 60 times 18 pi times 18 pi, and I get 14.1 inches. And I would just type it in like that. Okay? All right, you ready for this? Oh, yeah, we have to test.